I'm back with a booster juice this time. And I'm going to talk about career matcha properly. Have you ever gone on LinkedIn, found someone and wondered how they get that job? Then you look at somebody else with the same job to see what experience they had. Then you keep going on and on until you hit the LinkedIn limit. Okay, maybe not, but I did. So I built Career Matcha. It's a database of career paths that's meant to give you inspiration and just ideas for what to do. It's not too complex, but another fun Next.js project, so I'm going to walk through it. So when you get to careermatcha.com, this is the landing page. So an FAQ, and I used to have a email sign up over here, but I got rid of that. So you can just get started. We have next auth with the Google service provider, my favorite, because it's easy. This is the homepage. It's got all your careers, sort of on this Pinterest-ish board style. You can see this guy went to UT Austin, analyst, analyst, consultant, PM, and now is a lead PM at Uber and you can filter by job category. So let's say software engineering and some artificial intelligence stuff. So these filters show up as pills here. You can keep filtering for education. Who got an MBA? Oh, only one person got an MBA. If I take off this guy, for example, I wanna, if I wanna save this career, cause I'm interested, it, it's saved. This little, I don't even know what it's called. Something shows up and I can either click the link there or I can go view my saved career. So I have a few saved here. And these are just for, for you to reference if you wanna, wanna keep them later. And yeah, I try to do some other mentorship stuff, but kind of put a pin in the project. And this is the desktop view, of course. And I'll record what the site looks like on my phone because it's different. Oh, career matcha. Let's see if we have SEO actually. Nope. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's sign in. So it's an all vertical layout as you'd expect. No columns, just rows. These filters come out from the side now. Again, let's do software engineering. And let's say you did computer science. So the pills, the filter show up. Let me just show you what it looks like. I mean, it is a little bulky there. I do realize that now. So let's just take off one of those. And yeah, you can still save stuff. Shows up here. These are my saved careers. And that's that. My tech stack of choice, as always, Next and Tailwind. On the back end, I used Postgres and Prisma. So pretty similar to my previous video where I talked about Crossy Walk. It's just the stack that I'm comfortable with. And let's dive into the code. The way this project is laid out, pretty standard, source directory, components and pages. I'll start over here with paths. That's this homepage that you see. What I wanna point out is this get server side props because that's how I pull the data from this database using Prisma. So I set up that connection as you typically would. And then here I pull all the data from that database, save it in careers. Then I return it as a JSON object in the props. Then going back up, I can use these careers and create each card here, filtered careers dot map path card. And I'll talk a bit about how I did the filtering in a second, but that's the front end really. It's, it's fairly straightforward. Moving on to the database. I do have a Postgres database hosted on Heroku and I'm using Prisma as my ORM. So this is the schema file that sets everything up. I have two models, one for careers. This table stores all the career information, the ones that you see reflected in these cards. So each card pulls data from one row in that database. Then I have a second model, user saved, where I store the saved careers of each user. And the ID that I'm using is just their email, which we get because you had to use the Google authentication provider to log in. To show you how the database comes into play, thought I'd go through this example of what happens when you save a career. And you can view it here in your saved careers. So this is the path card component. That's the component here that gets created from any careers that, that show up. This component has some functions, mainly save career and I believe unsave career. What happens when you click on that saved icon is that it calls this save career. And this is just a bit of a check because you should be signed in order to access the page anyway. What this does uses Axios to call API save career. It passes in the data of your user ID and also the career ID, the specific ID that we need to add to your saved careers, which is just an array. And this API route reads in the data you want that's sent in the body. And it just performs the 
requisite Prisma command. So it first finds your user and then saves it. Right, and this is an if else. If your user exists in the user save table, then we'll just push this career, I career ID to that, to your array. If you haven't saved anything previously, it'll create your user in that table, and then it'll just create a, a new array with that career ID as the only element in that array. So that's an example of how those API routes work. And Prisma makes this very, very simple. What I do want to spend some time talking about actually is this filtering that I did here. So you can see, let's just do startups and you got an MBA. Oh, it's only two. Okay, never mind. It's not that many. So these filters are exclusive. I think that's the term. As in, you'll only find the intersection between multiple filters. But when all these filters disappear, then you get everything. So pretty typical filtering. And the way I did that, if we head back to the paths.js page, see here I grab all the careers in the database from this prisma.find many, and then I pass it in here as careers. But then I actually have this constant here, filtered careers, which calls this search filter function. And what that does, it's this function over here. And what that does is it takes this careers object, and that's all of the careers in the database, and it returns an object of filtered careers. And what comprises those filtered careers depends on the conditions of what filters are present. So you can see here, if the active filters, I'll explain that in a sec, if there are no active filters, then just return the original careers because I wanna show everything. Like in this case, when there are no filters, I wanna show all the careers. And then if there are some filters present, then I grab those filters and then it's just this line here that filters the careers object and it returns careers that have the tags that include the specific filter. So I'm going off of these tags that you see here. So if I go to product, you notice every result has this product tag. Pretty self-explanatory, but what's this active filters? Here I actually did something, I'm not sure if it's best practice, probably not, but I used context to store the active filters because what I wanted to happen was that you see here I have the product and let's just say business. I have these two filters. I wanted to maintain these filters even if I clicked away. So if I go to saved, you know, scroll around, whatever, maybe unsave something. Then I go back to the browse. It still shows product, product and business as active filters. And I wanted to maintain these because I think it just made for a better user experience. So in order to do that, I couldn't just store the state inside this paths component. And I ended up using context. And in the context, then I have the state for active filters. And I also stored something else here. Yeah, the current path, just so the navbar knows what to gray out. You see if I go to insights, it's grayed out here. Browse is grayed out. I did that in this context as well. So it's honestly not the best named because I started out with one context provider and I just shoved all the functionality in there. So setting the filters in this path heading, yeah, handle filter change. Path heading is this, this filter component you see here. And when you select those options, those categories here, such as uncheck this, check this, it calls this handle filter change and it essentially just updates the context as as appropriate. And it does that over here, set active filters because that's pulled down from that context. Then finally, I did a few things with playwright and testing, but I actually made an entire separate video on that because I wanted to go more in depth. So you can watch that here if you want. And there you have it. Hopefully some inspiration for Next.js for you guys. Maybe not so much the actual career inspiration because it was super hard to get the data. So I ended up just manually writing a script and using SQL to just put it in Postgres. It would be nice if I could somehow scrape LinkedIn, but they have all these limits and they don't have an API anymore. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more.